exposing warehouses. And that's going to be interesting because a lot of this infrastructure that it connects to is still owned, operated, and provided by other providers. So when you look at public clouds and the internet, the internet ultimately is uh, remarkably a, a frail operating platform. Um, it, it is based on a, a loose set of handshakes uh, and agreements between operators who provide these services, uh, ad hoc peering and transit relationships about how your traffic moves from point A to point B, uh, and, and ultimately um, this 40-year-old uh, you know, uh, set of protocols that were really never designed for a lot of the dynamism and uh, mobility that we're facing today. Uh, so at the end of the day, we're, we're, when you look at this notion of, of how cloud computing is evolving and being thrust into, into the limelight, and people are starting to look at it as um, uh, a, a new paradigm for uh, the way in which they compute, uh, we are piloting layer upon layer upon layer of abstraction, especially the virtualization of four-year-old technologies and wondering why we still have issues. So the internet assumes this fictional, trusted core, right? But in reality, it is an untrusted, unreliable, and hostile platform. And so within certain context, so then this cloud. Right? So that's, that's basically the point of, uh, of setting context. So has anybody heard of this airline called Air, Air Deccan or Deccan, I'm not sure how to pronounce it? It's, a, it's an Indian airline. And there's, a, there's an interesting old Hindi uh, proverb that says, uh, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Uh, use duct tape to secure the wing of an Airbus A320 that flies at 36,000 feet. This video was taken by a guy sitting in the plane, getting ready to take off, as this crew came and literally applied duct tape to the uh, halo. And in many cases, it's a, it's a funny paradigm to what we're doing. What's a funny uh, analogy to what we're doing uh, with how we uh, secure cloud computing? Right? You're simply bolting out a bunch of duct tape to stuff that really shouldn't have duct tape bolted onto. So a lot of people say, "What the heck is cloud computing?" Um, do you know the the origin of jumping the shark, by the way, that saying, that statement, to land. And so, for those of you that don't, uh, the writers of Happy Days, much like presenters like me who run out of cute analogies to make presentations, uh, ran out of ideas for a script. So one day, somebody, one of the writers raised their hand and said, I know, we'll have Fonzie put on a pair of water skis and jump a shark in the lagoon. And they just ran out of it. And so that's where jumping the shark came from. And uh, from the perspective of cloud, people look at cloud computing in a way it's marketed and talked about much in the same way. It's like, oh, you ran out of something interesting to say, so now we'll introduce cloud. Well, when you look at cloud, we're starting to get a lot more, uh, the discussion is starting to trend more away, uh, away from what is cloud computing to how it's used. But it's pretty important to, uh, to set the context here. So in, in the States, we have uh, the National Institute of Standards and Technology. And this, Peter Mao came up with a, a, a document that described cloud pretty well. I made a graphical representation of it. And so essentially there are deployment models, there's delivery models, and essential characteristics. And I won't go through all of them but uh, in, in detail, but there's you know, public, private, hybrid clouds, community clouds. There are software as a service, platform as a service, infrastructure as a service, and there are a bunch of things that make, um, uh, that define cloud computing. And we're going to, you'll hear these terms a lot, and I'm going to introduce them kind of throughout the presentation as it relates to, uh, to security so you understand what that means. But when you think about the key ingredients of cloud definition, uh, think of it as, as the abstraction of, of infrastructure from resources. So essentially separating the resources that are delivered from the infrastructure that delivers them. Uh, then democratizing the resources, making them available for consumption to, to anybody that wants to, uh, to, to use those services. And then being services oriented, instead of being application or network centric. If you look at those three items though, you can apply those definitions to pretty much anything we've seen in IT for the last 20, 30 years. There's nothing particularly unique about those three components. The two parts that are, that are unique to cloud are this notion of self-service, on-demand, elasticity, or dynamism, being able to scale up or scale down to a very simple, easy interface that anybody can control, which is unique. Because if you want to add capacity today, there's, an, and there's a very complex set of, uh, set of activities that have to occur generally for somebody to do that. Uh, it can't auto-scale generally in today's infrastructure, so that's a very unique and differentiating uh, element. And then this utility model of consumption and allocation, which is to say the way in which you uh, consume it and, and how you purchase those services or get them charged back to you is also very different. So it's kind of the all you can drink but pay by the bike or pay by the drink model, which is also very unique. So those two new uh, elements combined with those three others really are what make up cloud. 